Welcome everybody to the 3.30 show. You're going to be listening to a lady named Randine Holloway. She's fantastic. I was just in the last workshop and I tell you what, it was great. So if I were you, be ready to have your pen ready and write down these notes. She's a member of Woodridge Toastmasters since 2011. She served as a sergeant at arms and a VP of education. She currently has her advanced communicator bronze and her advanced leadership bronze. She's working towards her advanced communicator silver award, which is really awesome. Randy aspires to speak professionally and welcomes feedback on her presentation today. So if you see the evaluation sheets on your seats, please fill them out. She wants the feedback. Today, she'll be helping you set your goals to pursue your own dreams. Please welcome Randy Holloway, setting the, your goals, the path to personal success. Thank you. Yes. Have you found yourself asking, what should I do or where should I go? Yes. Maybe you've even started an endeavor but didn't have a clear direction where to go. Or you've been putting off an endeavor because you didn't know how to get started. Well, good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Today, I'm going to show you how to set goals to launch you on your path to personal success. In my presentation, I'm going to walk you through exercises that are going to help identify what you like to do and what you do well. And then we're going to use these items to set SMART goals. By setting these goals, you may find that you will have to step out of your comfort zone and they will hopefully help you move forward in what you're doing. You know, sometimes change and stepping outside of your comfort zone, it can be a little bit scary. However, if you don't make changes, set goals, and strive for more, then you'll never know what you are capable of. And I know this firsthand. I found myself in situations where I can definitely say I was in a rut. I've even recently asked myself, what do I want to be when I grow up? Uh -huh. Well, in case you haven't noticed, I am grown up. But it is never too late to pursue personal success. I am on this path with you, so let's get started. First, I want to share with you a personal story. As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be a doctor. I didn't always know what field I wanted to specialize in, but I knew that I wanted to be a doctor. It wasn't until my sophomore year in high school that I figured out what field I want to specialize in. And that was because my sophomore year in high school, I broke my left clavicle, or collarbone as you may know it. And I spent a lot of time in the orthopedic surgeon's office. The day that I was released to go back to normal duties, resume gym class at school, I broke my left arm. <laughs> I broke it to the point where that evening they had to put me to sleep to set my arm and then later I eventually had a plate and six pins put in my arm. Still there. So I thought, you know what, this must be a sign that I should be an orthopedic surgeon. So from that point on I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon. My junior year in high school my, one of my teachers nominated me for what is called the National Youth Leadership Forum on Medicine. Students from all across the country could be nominated for this forum. We stayed for 12 days at Loyola University in the dorms with roommates. 
We got to do medical seminars. We shadowed surgeons or whatever field you were looking into getting into. I shadowed a surgeon. I actually got to see a brain surgery performed. And I know some of you, I can see your faces. You're thinking, that's disgusting. I thought it was so cool. I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So fast forward to my freshman year in college. Here I was in one of my chemistry classes, and I had always done well in chemistry in any of my science classes. In fact, I took advanced chemistry when I was in high school and got an A, so I thought this is going to be fine. I had no clue what the professor was talking about. I found myself completely overwhelmed, and I started thinking, maybe this is not for me. I decided to change my major to business, went on and got my master's degree in business, and as I mentioned, I found myself now wondering what I want to be when I grow up. What I started to realize was that I hadn't really set any goals. I hadn't set a path for what I was trying to accomplish. I was just going through the motions. I got degrees after degrees just because that's what we do to be successful, right? Like, I have a degree, so I should just be able to get a job and everything's just going to sort of fall into place. And that's not the case. So now I find myself taking the time to set goals and really focus on what it is that I want to do. So each of you should have received a handout. This is the first exercise that we're going to do. One side says goals, the other side has two lists of five. So we want to look at the side that has the two lists of five. And the very first list says, list five things that you like to do or that you are interested in. So I want you guys to take the time to write five things that you like to do or that you're interested in. And I'll share my list with you as well to help give you some ideas. Because this can be five, any five things. Don't just think career-wise. This could be hobbies. This could be things that you like to do with your friends or your family. Any five things, <coughs> list them here. So going through my list, I have that I like learning and trying new things. I'm all about learning how to be better, do better, learning about history, just learning anything. I like to learn. One of the reasons that I joined Toastmasters was to learn to be a better speaker, to be a better leader. But not just that. I can't speak for everybody's club, but one of the things that I love about my club is that each meeting, people give speeches that teach us so much that we can apply to our lives. I've seen a speech where a gentleman was teaching us how to hold and swing a golf club. I attended a speech where we learned how to fold and make origami. <laughs> I even learned how to incorporate exercise on my vacation, which I haven't done yet, but I know how to do it. So I really just enjoy learning new things. Another thing that I like to do is to help others, whether it's through volunteering, sharing my knowledge with others like I'm doing today. Whatever it is to help others, I like to do that. I also like to travel. And I admit that I don't do it as often as I would like to, but I do like to travel. I like to go to new places, experience different cultures. That intrigues me. I also like, when I'm traveling, trying new foods because I love to eat in case you can't tell. I'm a bit of a foodie and I like to try new foods, go to new restaurants. I'm that person that anytime a new restaurant opens in the neighborhood, I will put it in my phone and I'm like, hubby, we have to go here. And we usually don't. We always go to the same places. Does anybody else have that problem where you always end up going to the exact same place and you get the exact same thing every single time? <laughs> But you know what else is really cool? Like after you've had a really good meal, a really good nap, I also like to sleep. 
Now I'm being a little bit funny with the eating and sleeping, although those are things that I like to do, but the whole point of me throwing those in there is you really can list any five things that you like to do. So I'd like to give you a moment, I know some of you guys were writing while I was talking, which is good, but I'd like to give you a moment now just to think of five things that you like to do or that you're interested in doing and complete that exercise. I'll just give you a moment. supposed to go to college and get a good job and that's what we're supposed to do. That may not be what you really like to do. Not everybody goes to college. Some people have found success without ever going to college. I wish I was that person because I have a lot of student loan debt that I would really like somebody to take on for me. If you are volunteering, we can talk after the meeting. <laughs> but wanting to be a better speaker is one of the things that I really like to do, and that's what led me to Toastmasters. That may not be what the person next to me wants to do, and that's okay, because my success is not based on what their success is based on. I'll share with you another story. When I was in high school, I was a track runner. I actually ran the 400 meter open 400 meter and I also ran the 4x4 relay. If you're not a runner and you're wondering what I'm talking about, the 400 is a full lap around the track. It's actually the longest sprint. Anything after that is considered long distance running, but it is still a sprint. I'm all about getting out there and running fast and being done. But if you haven't noticed, there's a huge craze right now with long distance running. Everybody's doing marathons and half marathons and 5Ks. And I'm like, yeah, I want to get on that bandwagon. So in 2011, I decided I was going to run a half marathon. This is after not running anything since high school. And I trained, and I did it. I completed the half marathon. Notice I said completed. I didn't run the whole thing. I ran most of it, but I completed it, and I accomplished that goal. And then I started doing all these 5Ks. Like, there's the hot chocolate 5Ks, and there's 5Ks where you can throw paint at each other, and you can run through foam, and it's all really fun. But I realized that I didn't have the passion for long distance running. Even though everybody else is doing it, that's not what I like to do, and that's not what I do well. I'm not a distance runner. I'm panting by the time the thing is over, and I'm ready for it to be over, and I'm like, why did I sign up for this? It's not me. So we don't always have to do what everybody else is doing. That's their success story. What's your success story? So this next exercise I want you to do is talking about five things that you do well. Not what I do well, not what your sister or your brother does well. What are the five things that you do well? Because you're going to be successful if you focus on what you're good at and not what others are good at. I'm not good at distance running, so that is not my success story. But some of the things that I do think that I'm good at, one of them is speaking. Yay! Now you may disagree and you may be thinking, she's the worst speaker ever. But I think I'm pretty good at speaking. So that's something that I do well. And I'm still learning and I welcome any feedback. But I think that that's something that I do well. And that's not something everybody can say. But that's my success story. Another thing that I think that I do well is academics. As I mentioned, I did well in school with exception of that chemistry class that I did not do so well in. But I did, once I switched over to business, I actually finished my master's degree and my undergraduate degree at the top of my class. Dean's list every semester. 
I think I'm pretty good at academics. Now, if I were to take those tests right now, I don't know how well I would do. <laughs> but we'll just say that I'm good at academics. I'm also a good listener. Now, despite what my husband might tell you, I listen really well. My friends tell me that is the best attribute about me, is that they can call me with their problems, and I can be that shoulder that they can cry on. So I'm a good listener. Also, I'm a good organizer and planner. I'm slightly OCD when it comes to organizing and planning. I'm that person that when I go on vacation, I have the full itinerary planned out. I know what we're doing every second of the day. I've got all of the paperwork together, you know, confirmations for the flight and the boarding passes and all that. Even though I use my phone a lot of times, I still print everything out on paper just in case. I make a packing list and it's organized by toiletry and clothes and electronics. And yeah, I'm that organized and planning. But that's something that I'm good at. And I know not everybody can say that. I can be that person to balance you out if you need it. And another thing that I'm good at is writing. I actually have a poem that has been published in a book. I've done other creative writing excerpts for different things. One of the things that I'm working on at Toastmasters, because I'm such a good writer, is I started out being one of those people who would write out my entire speech and then memorize it. So I'm working on not doing that. I didn't do that with this one, despite my notes. I did. I only did bullet points of my five things just because I knew I wasn't going to remember those. But I, me I didn't write out my whole speech. But because I'm a writer, that's what I do. Like I enjoyed writing my entire speech out. So those are the five things that I think that I'm good at. I want to give you guys a moment to write down your five things. Yeah. Um, I just got a quick question. Would you consider cynicism a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things that, that most people say I'm good at. Okay. I didn't say they had to be a positive thing. It's just whatever you are good at. <laughs> I know sometimes it can be hard to list the things that we are good at because it sounds like we're bragging. Or maybe we don't even think that we're good at some of the things that we are. But I really encourage you to take the time to think hard about some things that you're good at, because I'm sure that there's probably more than five. And just like the things that we'd like to do, what I'm good at is not going to be the same as what you're good at. And what you're good at is not going to be the same as what you're good at. We all excel in different areas, and that's what makes us successful. If we all excelled in the same thing, we couldn't be successful because all of us can't be doing the same thing at one time. So now that we have what we're good at and what we do well, I want to show you how to use those to set goals. So on the back of your sheet, as an exercise on setting goals. I really would encourage you to try to use the items from what you do well and what you like to do to set a goal. But you can also use a goal maybe that you've been putting off for a while, or a goal that you have started and haven't quite finished just because you don't know where to go from here. You can also use that. But if you can, try to use the things that you like and the things that you are good at to set a goal. And I'll give you an example. I mentioned that I like to help others and that I'm good at writing. So the goal that I have set for myself is to write a book. And I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about that book in a second. 
But that's how I combine what I like to do with what I do well to write a goal that will help me be successful on my path to success. So I want to give you guys just a second to kind of think about what goal you want to work on and just write that on that first line for the goal that you have. Maybe your goal is Toastmasters oriented. If you're a new member to Toastmasters, maybe your goal is to complete your communi competent communicator distinction. Maybe you have a goal for work that you want to get a promotion. Maybe you have a goal of traveling more or to a specific place. One of my places that I want to get to before I leave this world is Italy. I would love to go to Italy. So maybe your goal is to go to Italy. Or maybe your goal is to go to Greece. Maybe your goal is just to make it through this presentation because I'm boring you. Whatever your goal is, write that on the line. Then what you want to do is break that goal down into a SMART goal. And the reason that we do this is this gives you direction for that goal. Because it's so easy for me to say, I want to write a book, but who's my audience? What is the book about? You can't accomplish a goal if you don't break it down into smaller parts. It makes it harder for you to accomplish it. If your goal is to get your competent communicator distinction, when do you want to get that by? Because that's probably everybody's goal in Toastmasters. There's a guy in my club, not picking on him, just saying, took him 11 years to get his. I did mine in one because I set that goal. And he even admitted he could have gotten his a lot sooner. He just didn't put the focus on it that he wanted to or needed to. So by making your goal smart, you're making it more focused. You're breaking it down into smaller parts. And I'll show you how you can do that. And you may have seen SMART goals before, whether it's in a work seminar or workshop or you read it in a book. Each time the letters stand for something a little bit different, but for the most part you get the same effect out of it. So I have the S is standing for specific. So I told you that my goal is to write a book. How do I make that more specific? Well, this is how. I want to write a book that will inspire and encourage others who deal with emotional struggles. I mentioned how well I did in college and I talked about changing my major, but what I didn't tell you is that I, throughout that time I also struggled with depression. And it carried over to a lot of my adult years that I dealt with emotional struggles. So I want to write a book about my experience and how I coped to hopefully help others in that situation. That's very specific. I now have an audience, I now have a topic that I'm writing about. Because before, I was just writing a book. But how am I gonna achieve that goal when I don't even know what the book is about? Now, I've gotten more specific, and I know at least what I'm writing about and who my audience is. The second part of that, the M, stands for meaningful. So to make my goal meaningful, I want to complete my book within the next year by writing at least one page a week. Just one page. The A stands for achievable, what I'm going to get to in a second, but this also is a part of an achievable. I'm not setting this expectation that I'm going to write six chapters tonight. I'm just saying one page per week that I'm going to write to work towards this goal. So now I have a specific goal of writing a book for people with emotional issues. And I know that I'm going to write one page every single week. The next piece of that is achievable. The A stands for achievable. I will achieve my goal by carving aside time each week to focus on my writing. 
So I'm not saying I'm going to carve aside six hours every single day, just some time each week to write one page towards my goal of writing a book to those who have emotional struggles. The R stands for results-based. This book will help me to continue to be encouraged by inspiring others. I will help others to be encouraged by recognizing that they are not alone in their battle and that there is a way to cope. So now I've made this goal that's the result that I hope to get from this goal. It benefits me and it's going to benefit others. And finally, the T stands for time-based. I will have a full manuscript ready for editing within one year. So I've also set myself a deadline to complete this goal. So remember I started off by saying I wanted to write a book. I've been working on this book for 10 plus years, but it wasn't until I actually made this goal smart and broke it down into meaningful, achievable, time-based goal that I was able to actually start really working towards this path to personal success. Because you can't accomplish a goal <coughs> that is just, I want to write a book. You really need to hone in on what this goal is going to do for you, give it a timeline, make it smart. And that's going to help you along your path to personal success. Just simply writing down the goal is helpful. Because when it's just here, you're not holding yourself accountable. When it's on your sheet of paper, when you actually put it in writing, that's when you're going to work toward it. And what I really suggest to people, too, is not just writing it down and then putting it in your purse and forgetting about it or throwing it in the garbage when you walk out. Please don't do that. At least throw it away when you get home. <laughs> but I recommend that you post it somewhere where you're constantly looking at this. In my room, I have an armoire that's really supposed to be for clothes, but I keep my jewelry and my makeup and stuff in there. So every morning, I'm opening that armoire. I have my goals taped to the door of my armoire so that every morning when I open it, I see my goals. It's that daily reminder of what I need to do to walk my path to personal success. Some people will put their goals on their mirror so that they can look at it while they're brushing their teeth in the morning. Others may post it in their car so they can look at it on their drive to work. If your goal has something to do with weight loss or getting fit, putting on the refrigerator is a constant reminder. When you're going to get that ice cream and you see your goal sitting in front of you of losing weight, you might think twice about getting that ice cream. Or if you're like me, you look at it and you're like, okay, and then you still get the ice cream. <laughs> I also recommend, besides posting it, that you make a conscious decision about who to share your goal with. Pick one or two people that you feel that are very trustworthy that will be your cheerleaders to help you accomplish this goal. Because unfortunately, we all probably have people in our lives who aren't necessarily our cheerleaders. Maybe would even try to discourage us. So you want to pick a mentor or a spouse or a friend that will help hold you accountable. My best friend knows that I'm working on a book. And every week when we check in with each other, she asks me how that book is going. So she's encouraging me. But I also know she's going to ask about it. So I feel obligated to work on this book so I can tell her I did something. Because there have been times when she's like, how's the book going? I'm like, um, what book? <laughs> but 
But when you've got that person who's holding you accountable, you're more likely to do make strides towards that. So share your goal, but make sure you share it with the right people. So I want to give each of you just a moment. I know some of you have been writing as I've been talking, but give you a moment to look this over. Maybe you need to look over the things that you like to do and the things that you do well a little bit more and try to figure out what your goal might be. Maybe you already have a goal that you're working on that you need to break it down. But take a moment to do that in this exercise. Toastmasters, it could be weight loss, I don't know if that really falls under hobby, how that goes, but whatever it is, I really encourage you to take the time to write the goal. You'll be surprised at what you can do and how much you will work towards something that you really take the time to write down, to post, to share. Especially if it's something you've been putting off. As I mentioned, I had been working on this book for a long time, but it wasn't until I started making my goals smart that I found that I really started working on it more diligently. And I'm getting to the point where I'm almost done, whereas before I write a page and abandon it. So I really do encourage you to take the time to do this and you'll be surprised at what your outcome will be when you write your goal down, and you post it, and you share it. By completing these exercises, you now have the tools that you need to walk your path to personal success. You no longer have to wonder what to do and where to go. You can start that endeavor that you've been putting off, or finish the one that you've already started, you have no more excuses. Remember that your success is what makes you happy and not what, what everybody else around you is doing. By identifying what you like to do and what you do well, you have now set a SMART goal to achieve. And you can use the same SMART goal exercise for any other goals that you may be working on. So I ask you guys, what are you gonna do this week to get started? I love the way you speak very eloquent, you're, the way you give us the tools to succeed in our personal life and professional life, I look up to you, you achieved a lot in your young life, and hopefully I'll see you as a DTM, by, <laughs> maybe by next year. Maybe. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So who here wants to do their CCs? Who's going to make the goal to achieve their success? I know I am. <laughs> Awesome, that's great everybody. At this time, I'd like to give F, um, Randine her certificate of appreciation for completing this workshop, and let's give her another round of applause. <laughs> and in front of you or on your seats, you have a, an evaluation form. Can you please fill that out? And once it's filled out, uh, I'll, I'll see you at the, the door. Thank you very much. I have a real... 
I have a really good inspirational story on finding out what you want to achieve. It's going to take less than a minute. Okay. Many of you know me. Tim Bolger is the videographer of the Unofficial Registry. It's funny how an interest will come out and cultivate itself. This all started because of a postmaster by the name of Jill Morgenthaler when she did a personal visit to Saddam Hussein. I mean, not a personal visit, they had a speech about how she met Saddam Hussein. And I said, I hope it's being taped. So I started learning the tape, and I found it very fascinating. And I also found out how it augmented Toastmasters, and this is an interest I had no idea that I was in. I also learned, too, the limitations and the goals of that hobby gone wild. So thank you very much for thank letting you. me come up here for just a minute. Yeah, thank you. This concludes the session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.